host Tanya, the Zen Stitcher, on Thursday, the 26th of January, and this is episode number nine. Today, I am going to focus on whips, and I think I have shown a few of the whips to you before. I can't remember which ones I've shown and which ones I haven't shown, but I just went through all of my project bags and pulled out all the whips um, that are cross-stitch. Um, I have some other whips that are non-cross-stitch, like um, some needlepoint and some cruel embroidery, but I'll save that for another day. Um, before we get into it, I just wanted to give a few updates. I had a pretty good holiday. Um, just before the holidays, my son, my older son, graduated with um, his welding degree, so that's exciting. He's back home living with us and looking for work. Um, our holidays were good, except for we we did lose our, um, our older cat, Baby, um, very quickly. He um, appeared to... Well, I guess one day he just started stumbling, and when we took him to the vet, they thought that he probably had a tumor in his brain, and he deteriorated really, really fast. So just before the, the new year, we, we, we lost him. And so while it was really, oh gosh, it's extremely hard to say goodbye to pets, but I'm, I'm glad that he's not suffering anymore, and um, we miss him miss him a lot. Um, so um, we just have one little kitten, not a kitten, we have one cat, Bing, who's about four years old, and I hope to find a companion for Bing in the next month or so, so I am looking forward to that. Nothing will ever really play, replace our baby, but but I think Bing is a little bit lonely and could use a companion. Um, other than that, uh, nothing really new, uh, New York, um, winter hasn't been too bad. I'm kind of bummed we haven't had any snow. I know a lot of places in the country have had tons of snow, but it's been sort of a record that New York City hasn't received any snow so far this, uh, winter season kind of sad. Um, we were supposed to get some yesterday, but it just rained. So anyway, um, let's see. What else can I tell you? Oh, I have the house to myself today, which is nice. My husband and my son are visiting my mother-in-law, who um, is 90, and uh, I, I get to stay home and, and have a quiet day. So that's nice. So I have some coffee and I have um, some whips to show you. And I just wanted to say thank you uh, to everybody who watches my channel, who comes back, who subscribes. Um, those of you that are new, welcome. Those who are returning, welcome and thank you. I really appreciate uh, all the views and I appreciate the comments as well. So without further ado, let's get started and show some whips. This is such a great way to actually get me excited about the things that I have sort of in the background. And, and also, it's funny, when I pull the whips out, I realize that some of the um, projects are closer to finish than I realized, and it really helps me focus a little bit more on those and hopefully finish some things or get me excited to finish some things. I've had a few few new starts this month and a few finishes as well. So if this video doesn't go on too long, I think I'll pull those out and show them as well. But we'll get started with the whips. Okay. So the first whip is not a sampler, but it's um a Christmas, uh, French Christmas pattern, Noël dans la forêt, so Christmas in the forest, and I don't know if you can tell, 
but there are, is a beautiful Christmas tree and or pine tree and then lots of woodland animals around the tree. It's a really cute prep, really cute pattern. And this comes from uh, Couleur d'Etoile, Colored Star. And what I decided to do with this one is I kind of went rogue and did my own color conversions. Um, and I'm not even sure what fabric I'm using, but I decided instead of doing a green tree, I would do a blue tree and uh, picked my own threads. So this is a combination of threads some DMC, I think there is some, um, there might be some silk in there. Uh, so anyway, I'm almost done with it. So I really should finish it up soon because it wouldn't take me long to do that. Okay, so the next whip is the Jenning Band Sampler by Scarlet Letter. And this is a really pretty sampler. I am down to the part, the white work down at the bottom. And I've been working on this one for quite a long time. But I ran across some issues in some of the um, areas because I just couldn't get the right stitch um, I couldn't follow the diagram and do the stitch that was called for in the pattern. And that was in this section where, uh, in here. So this section, you were in the, the green kind of band that goes around the flowers. And then the other band this other band here, this green band too. So I was supposed to fill that with, um, what was it? Fishbone, yeah. And I could not get it right. So then I thought, well, let me put Montenegrin in there. And that didn't look right either. So I ripped those out. And right now, I think what I'm going to settle on, and you'll see it on the upper um, section, I just put a running stitch in between the um, area that's supposed to be filled. Um, I'm not super crazy about that, but the reason I chose to do that is because I have seen some band samplers where a running stitch has just been in, in that area, so I think it would be fine. But anyway, it's a really pretty sampler. It's not very big. And like I said, um, you can see here that I'm on the white work section. So I really don't have, a, oh, and I have, a, I have more to fill in here um, and finish in this area, some satin stitch um, and some satin stitch over here too. Um, but it is a beautiful sampler. It's just been in timeout for a little bit because because I wasn't sure what to do, you know, in these areas here. So now that I've decided I'm just going to do a running stitch, I should just pick it up and, and try and finish it. And it's on my Millennium frame, which is really great. Um, so I don't use this frame very often, and um, it's a little bit... I don't really have a stand to hold it on, or I do, but... It, it's still awkward because I don't use it that often. So anyway, okay, next one. This one's been in a bit of a timeout too. <laughs> Is a DaVenture Duo. Um, and I love this sampler. I'm doing the IDL, which is this one on the front. There are two samplers in this book. This is the other sampler, and they're so beautiful. Uh, GDR and Needlework Press put this one out. And um, 
I started it a while ago and then wasn't crazy about the colors for some reason. Um, so Ellen um, Chester was working on it as well. And I asked her, she said in her, I think it was on Instagram that she changed some of the colors. So she helped me um, change some of the colors by sharing some of her conversions. And I haven't gotten too far. I, I like it. I think, I don't know why I'm a little stuck on it. I think if I just did more, I would like the colors more. But I'm sort of at a standstill here. And I should just, just do it. I mean, the colors are beautiful. But um, it's kind of one of those samplers I haven't quite gotten into, even though I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, all of those flower urns, oh my God, what's not to love? So I'm going to start working on this again. I think I'll try to work on it maybe next week. That'll be really fun to finish. So uh, just a start. It's more of a start than a whip, I guess. Okay. Next one is Isabel Fox, and I've showed Isabel Fox before. I may not have gotten any further than the last time I showed you, but I'll show it anyway. This is another beauty. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, this is the one I started and then didn't like the colors and restarted. So here she is. And I'm on that tree in the middle, which is so beautiful. I love this sampler. Oh my goodness. I really need to get back to it too. It's really a fun sampler to do. And the angels are really cute. So I can't remember if I've made much progress. Most of my samplers are stitched on 40 count, and most of them I use the called for or DMC. I can't remember what I'm using for this one. I think it's DMC, actually. Hmm. Although the words here are, that must be, must be um, gentle arts. I didn't have time to pull out all the, the um, things that I'm using, the colors. Okay, this is Pandemic, which I started during the pandemic, although I, one could argue we're still in the pandemic. And uh, again, 40 count. And I have made pretty good progress on this one, too. I should get back to it because it is fun to do. And I've added some flourishes of red in there and some beige so I'm doing some color I don't know how much color I'm going to add into it I kind of do like just the black and and um, the black threads and I've been using a variety of black silks I like to mix up the silks a little bit and um, use kind of a, a dark black and then some I think right in here right in here is a little bit of a gray or black. So there's some variation to the black, which I think is pretty. Um, anyway, I really sh I really love, love this and should get back to it too. It's fun. Probably done about four pages, I think. Oh, and then I did a little koala bear. Um, because when I was stitching this, that's when they were having those horrid fires in um, Australia. Oy, okay. The next one is Heartstring. I think I've showed this one before too. So I've made some more progress on, on this one. This is called Thirsty Heart. It's really pretty. Those roses are so gorgeous. Again, I'm on 40 count, and I'm using, what am I using? Gentle Arts, I think, on this one, to be sure. 
or weak style, one of the two. Anyway, if you have any questions about what colors I'm using, just let me know and I can send it to you. But haven't I haven't gotten to the deer yet. Still working on those flowers and butterflies. So that's pretty. And the words. The words I had to redo because I made a big mistake and used the wrong thread. So that was a big frogging project. Taking them out. All right, next one is, this is called Snowballs by Filigram. Um, a cute little winter scene. And this one, I, oh gosh, I got this from Krista. I can't remember, I think it's only 36 count. I don't think it's 40. He's almost done too. So sweet. Another kind of woodland scene. I think it'll be a nice complement to the first one I showed you, the tree in the forest. So sweet. So I only have really... Yeah, the snowman is done. He's done. So I just have that bottom. So see the top section? There's a section at the bottom. So this section here I have to do. That shouldn't take too long. Maybe I should put these in like half finished, three quarters finished, categorize it that way so I know what what to work on. All right, here's Amy Herbert. Oh my god, I love this one so much. Oh gosh. And it was out of print, but now it's back in print. 1884 has released it, so it's really a fun sampler. Okay. Um, this one, I know I am stitching this on a higher count. I think it's 46. And that house is so gorgeous. What a fun to stitch a checkerboard house. That's the first time I've stitched a house. Um, and I am using, I'm using um, I can't remember what I'm using. I think I'm using DMC. I'm pretty sure I'm using DMC. Maybe a silk or two. Oops, no, that's the back. <laughs> okay. There's the front. So almost done with all of the letters. The house is really gorgeous and fun to stitch. And then I have um, some border left and then that sawtooth um, section at the bottom. So wonderful, wonderful sampler. Okay. Oh, and this is creme brulee from Tabby Cat. Love it. Okay, I know I've shown this one before as well. This is Florentine Picard from 1841. Flor Tortel. Tor Tortel? No, I don't know how you pronounce that. Excuse me, that was loud. Um, I love this one. I think these colors are so, so pretty and soft. So I worked on this a little bit uh, recently. And I don't remember where I was the last time I showed you guys, but, um, oops, what's going on here? Oh, I need to remember the binders. Okay, so kind of a big sampler. Um, See those very pretty soft pinks, greens, some gold on the church, I guess that's a church. Very pretty. Oh, I love this one so much. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting pretty far along. Um, I've reached the bottom. 
reach the bottom border. So I just need to finish the church. And then on the other side of the church is similar to the right side is similar to the left side. So um, that's, that's another one I want to finish up pretty soon because it's really fun. Okay. The next one, I don't know if I've ever shown this one, but oh my gosh, this one's so pretty. And yeah, and um, Tong Up and Down. What a gorgeous sampler. Excuse me, I don't know why I haven't returned to this one. It's so, so pretty. Look at all those flowers and the colors. And then, of course, there's the companion piece on the back, her sister, Isabella, which I'm not sure I'm going to do Isabella. No, we'll have to see, but I love this one, and oh, it's so gorgeous. Okay, so this one, definitely 40 count, and I know for sure I'm doing the um, Vicki Clayton silks. So that's how far I, I've gotten. Um, I love that basket of flowers. How pretty. I think it would be so pretty just to do that basket of flowers and, and um, frame it. It's just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Can't wait to finish that one. Okay. Next is Thread of Connection. And this is by Amy Mitten. And I think I've shown this one too. I don't think I've made any more progress since the last time I showed it, but I would like to get back to it. Um, let's see. I'll come back here. I really love those letters. They are so pretty. Of course, there's a peacock. And then a few crowns and Amy Mitten. I'm using, this came as a kit, so I'm using the linen it came with and Amy's silks, which are really divine to work with. So, yeah, that's a pretty sampler. I've got to get back to this one. And this is not a reproduction. This is one of her own designs. So... She does some really fun stuff. Um, lots of interesting motifs in here. Uh, another checkerboard house. And, um, and then this gentleman here who appears to be um, in a fight with someone. <laughs> so funny. Anyway, it's a quirky one, but I love it. Okay. Okay, next one. And this is a brand new start. Oh, Martha Evans. Okay, this is so fun. Um, it's so much fun for a whole bunch of reasons. First reason is happy birthday to Brenda and how lovely that, um, that there's a stitch along celebrating your 60th birthday. I think that's really fantastic. It's my first Scarlet House sampler. I've never stitched one before. It's such a beautiful sampler. And I am really enjoying it. Beautiful colors. Um, so I think in the last plus tube, I said I was going to be on a diet, a stitchy diet. And I've tried really, really hard to stick to that diet. I've been pretty good. I did buy this chart, but I had a gift certificate to the attic, so I used the gift certificate. And then I had linen, so um, I used linen for my stash. And then I decided to just use DMC, so I had most, I think I had most of the DMC, and I only had to pick up maybe two or three skeins of DMC. So 
So this one didn't really cost me anything except I did buy the project bag and I did buy a little doodad from um, Samplings of Memories, which is coming in the mail. Both have, haven't arrived yet, but um, but that should be fun. So um, anyway, it's a, it's a really fun project. Um, and I just have to say, what a sweet, I watched Sarah's video Sarah's oh yeah and Brenda and Laura's video about the sampler symposium and how um, Brenda was feted and what a great gosh it was so so lovely to see how they celebrated her birthday there I was just so happy to see that and I thought it was just magical um, you know the community that um, came together and comes together to celebrate birthdays and and support and love um, with each for each other is just wonderful. So, anyway, um, there are lots of lovely, lovely, lovely stitchers out there. So, it's fun to be a part of that community. Um, so, this is my start. And not too far, I'm almost done with page one. I love the bunny. Not sure how I'm going to go about stitching this. I might do like one page at a time and then uh, go to something else. But anyway, it's a fun stitch and um, it's fun to be a part of it. And last but not least, I have been wanting to start this sampler for a long time and I and I um, I don't know why I kept just not doing it but anyway I thought I was going to start it maybe during Black November and I didn't um, but then I just decided I'm going to do it so here it is Krista Gramer's Sarah and Fernley, 1826. Such a wonderful sampler. I love this one so much. Um, and I started it on, this is, what is this? Oh, Fragile. That's right, Fragile. 46 count. And I'm using Vicki Clayton's black basic black. It's so pretty. Hard to put this one down. <laughs> All right, those are my whips. So, um, how many minutes are we here? Oh gosh, only 15 minutes. Okay, that's not bad. Um, All right, so what I'm going to do is pause for a moment and I'm going to go get two finishes. And then I think I'll have to insert two pictures because, yeah, and I'll insert two pictures of a couple of other finishes. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm back. Okay, so the first finish I had this year was um, Birds of a Feather by Blackbird Design. I know I've showed this one to you before, and you may or may not recall that what I decided to do was mimic the antique. So I love their adaptation, uh, but I also love the antique. And I thought it was really quirky how the border, I love quirky borders. I thought um, it was so interesting. So I kind of made my own adaptation. And what I did is I, um, used a lot of the colors that they called for in the charting of this one, because they're similar, and then added some of my own colors. So here's my finish. Here's my finish. It was such a fun stitch. I really, really love doing this. It is really fun to kind of do your own thing sometimes, and I followed some of the pattern and then I tried to 
follow the antique as much as I could from the back. So can't wait to get that framed. Then the other finish I had was I did a small blessing sampler at the beginning of January. And this is a free chart that Mary Wind Farms put out about two years ago on Sampler World. And um, it was such a fun little stitch. I really love this simple, simple uh, yet elegant pattern. And it went quickly too. So not only did I finish it, but I fully finished it as well. I stitched this on 50 count. Hmm. Now I can't remember what I stitched it on. I can't remember the label. Oh. 50 count. Is it extrude? Maybe. 50 count using Sursufine silk in red. It went fast and it was so much fun to stitch and then I got the frame from Art to Frame which is based in Brooklyn although they they ship out of I think Massachusetts or some some other place not here um, I laced it up myself so I'm getting some experience with lacing I, I don't feel a hundred percent comfortable with it yet but getting there um, I've done two now so that's you know, the more you do it, the better you get at it. So anyway, that was fun. That was a fun stitch. Um, so the two other finishes that I did since my last YouTube, one was I framed the um, the carriage carriage was it carriage house? No, country. No, cottage gardens. I'm sorry. Cottage Garden Gratitude for my sister. I finally framed that and got it off to her. So I will insert a picture here. And the other one that I fully finished was the Stacy Nash Halloween. Um, it was supposed to be like a little pocketbook. And I decided to make it into a drum. Um, and that has been packed away with my... Uh, my Halloween goodies so I didn't want to pull it out but anyway I will put a picture of it here too um, it was fun it was fun to make a drum I'd love to make a drum again and Vanna Pfeiffer's instructions are impeccable she's amazing um, I will put a link down below and and um, in case you want to make your own drum she's great um, okay, so let's see. The only, let's see, I have a um, retreat coming up in late April at Stitch North in Toronto. Looking forward to that. And no other trips planned before then. Uh, or maybe a trip, uh, I don't know, my husband and I might do a trip to, quick trip to Montreal to visit our son there. Um... And then what else? Um, oh, I think what I'll do is insert some photos at the end of this video of some of the art that I saw this um, Christmas at the Botanic Garden and um, a few other museums um, that we took advantage of during the holidays. Um, and I'm also going to share a video of a Cooper's hawk that has been visiting our backyard. And I, I snapped a video of him having lunch one day. So if you're kind of grossed out by that kind of thing, it'll be at the very end. So fair warning. I don't want to, I don't want anybody to be grossed out, but he is a magnificent bird. He was in our backyard all morning, and he's just beautiful. I don't know where he lives, but um, I think because I feed birds in my backyard, he, he kind of knows that there might be some morsels here, like eat birds. I don't know. You know, it's nature. 
So <laughs> it's, it's fascinating to watch. I can't believe in, in the middle of New York City, I have a Cooper's Hawk in my backyard. I'm just like amazed by that. So it's a lot of fun. Anyway, I hope this finds everybody well, that you're stitching what you love and you're getting in a lot of stitchy time and that, uh, you know, you're sharing your, your work with, um, with everyone on Instagram and Facebook. And, um, if you have any questions about the work that I showed earlier, threads or fabrics or linens that I'm using, um, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to answer them quickly. Um, I'll also put links for all the charts that I showed um, in case, you know, you're interested or can't remember um, what I showed um, in case you want to stitch them too. So thanks again and we'll see you sometime soon. I don't know when. Bye.